Welcome to Rap Fix. Uh, this is the special uh, Shady 2.0 edition of Rap Fix Records, uh, excuse me, Rap Fix. And um, I had an opportunity to sit down with Eminem and Royce to 5 9 in recent days and talk about the new album they have, Hell the Sequel. And, you know, the whole concept between Bad versus Evil. We haven't, you know, heard anything from these guys in years. It was over 10 years ago when they first started working together. And, um, you know, they had a lot of friction within their crew that they had to get resolved before they even came back to this point. We'll talk about that later in the show. Before we show this clip, though, I want to start a hashtag, Eminem's Best Lines. Eminem's Best Lines. So if you could think back of some of your favorite Eminem songs, please tweet it to us under the hashtag Eminem's Best Lines. Now, one thing about bad and evil, a lot of people didn't realize who was bad and who was evil. So one of the things I want to ask them first is who's bad and who's evil. Here's Eminem and Royce to 5'9 on Rap Fix. Bad and evil, yeah, right? Yeah, we're referring to each other today as bad and evil. Yeah, so I'm bad. not Royce today. I'm bad. You he's bad evil. and he's evil? Yeah. yeah. Do, do, the world, do the roles ever switch where you're bad and he's evil? Um, I think it could interchange a little bit. Maybe mm -hmm. on the EP, sometimes it does that. Mm -hmm. you know? But uh, for the most part, I like my name, and I think I want to be evil. <laughs> We've had a debate about this before, okay. but yeah, I'm definitely bad. Okay. Yeah. All right. You okay? So I'm gonna refer to you as evil, and refer to you as bad. We really appreciate this. Okay. Cool, man. Thanks, I know. Man. Hey, man. I'm, hey, man. I respect it really that. means a lot. Okay. I yeah. still sway. I'm, you know, I'm still the same guy. So we were talking about just from a lyrical perspective what did it take and how did you guys actually create these verses where you know you guys are coming in seamlessly off of each other's syllables i mean how did that happen in the studio when you made fast lane well me and royce uh me and bad sorry oh yeah that was my bad, bad. Royce. Sorry, bad, bad. please just don't let it happen again. right uh me and bad mm -hmm. we uh you know ever since back in the day you know when we did records together we always had kind of a chemistry mm -hmm. it was fairly easy to, to play off what each other was doing and I think that we think a like a, a lot alike this this record like the way it came together I don't think that it wasn't anything that really we planned to do we didn't get together and say hey man let's make a bad meets evil record it was it was more so along the lines of us kind of uh, making amends and repairing you know our issues that we had mm -hmm. and then just you know one day bad brought a uh <laughs> brought a song to me you know uh and wanted me to jump on it mm -hmm. and the way it ended up coming out was it was pretty it, it was it was it, it was pretty easy to do and it was it didn't take a lot of time and it was fun mm -hmm. to do it so the way we knocked that record out kind of quickly it just morphed into this yeah. you know what i'm saying it didn't feel like work and then we just we just had fun doing it. How different was it this time around having, you know, you guys went through all kind of life, you know, adversities and then to come back in the studio. Was it like instant chemistry or you know, how was it initially? Yeah, it was pretty nostalgic, actually. Yeah. It took me back. It took me back to when we used to do stuff back in the day. And I mean, it we clicked like that. I wasn't really surprised. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like we, we, we didn't miss a step. Didn't miss a step at all. Okay, uh, I, man, and uh, just as a uh, a historian, I never heard. This has nothing to do with the album, but uh, the version of Renegade that Royce was on. Yeah, that that record was actually made. We we were starting to make that record, mm -hmm. and um, it was a situation where uh, Jay had called me, mm -hmm. and I had another record that I wanted to to present to him. Yeah, and at the time. I think that uh, I think it was even we were recording on two inch reels uh -huh. back, back when that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think that what happened was there was a beat that I had and an idea for me and me and Jay to do a song together. But the reel with the beat on it was in L.A. and that was in Detroit. And Jay was on a deadline. So I kind of approached Jay like, yo, what about this record? I already have this. It's kind of already here. And he was working on a, a deadline. You know, he was working on a like real short window of time to, to get it done. So. That was kind of how that record came about. Wow. Okay. See, now, interesting enough, that's one of my uh, uh, all-time favorite uh, collaborative records with two artists, two MCs, was Renegade. Mine, too. Yours, too? Mm -hmm. I feel Thanks, like... Bad. Thanks, Bad. No problem, Evil. You know, uh, but listening to Fastlane, 
I'm, I'm in decision now, you know, of I feel like seeing the way you guys did this, the chemistry was a little different. I wasn't sure if you and Jay might have recorded in different locations. Did he do his verse with you in the studio or you just sent him? Track? Nah, I actually, I, I sent him the track and okay. then he, he put his, uh, his verses on there and then sent it back and, and then mi I mixed it. Okay, that's a, a piece of um, Eminem and Royce to 5'9". We got a lot more segments to show you. Obviously, he couldn't be here live with us today, uh, so we just did this interview a couple of days ago. Also, I wanted to note that the, M uh, the 50 Cent documentary that we showed you an exclusive clip of earlier in the show, The Making of Me, is actually airing on VH1 this Monday at 10 p.m. Eastern, so make sure you check that out. Send us any of your questions you have. I'm going to have Elliot Wilson from Rap Radar here in just a few moments. He's the only other person that got a chance to interview Royce to 5 9 and, um, and Eminem. Any questions you have about the interview, feel free to, to send it. We covered a, a few things in a short amount of time, and I want to make sure we get to all of it. Uh, one of the things we talked about was Eminem being a champion of Detroit in recent um, um, commercial, car commercials, and, you know, uh, you've seen Eminem. Uh, champion the automotive industry. You've heard some of his music bears under uh, different car commercials. Also, everything that happens with Shady Records happens in Detroit. So it's almost like he's waving the flag for Detroit. And we talked about that and some of the other inspirations that have been motivating him to record and perform once again. So here's Eminem talking about his inspirations. You've been a real champion of Detroit, whether it's the automotive industry and or even, you know, bringing Slaughterhouse and, you know, bringing the music industry to town. And it seemed like it's a, you know, you're aware of it, like it's a conscious effort, is it? I mean, some things are a conscious effort. Like, I always love to bring any type of light to the city mm -hmm. that I can bring. I always love to do that. You know, um, other things is just, some things are just just happen to work out the way they do you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying and the whole slaughterhouse thing and what royce was doing with with uh you know when when they formed that group like mm -hmm. it was exciting to me just because aside from the detroit you know connection that i already had with royce it, it's just to me it's exciting for hip-hop because it's uh it's so it's so new and yeah. fresh and different you know what i'm saying and, and i'm just a fan of of hip hop in general, so just me being a fan of rap and hearing what these guys are doing, uh -huh. you know, I just felt like I want to be a part of it. And also, at the same time, I feel like I'm, I'm kind of taking this year right now to try and reestablish and rebuild uh -huh. the label back too. Yeah, you know? it's, it, it felt like that, like it's, <clears throat> like Shady resuscitated right now. You know, with um, all the different signings with Yellow Wolf, who's, you know, he's carving his niche, Slaughterhouse, and then. You know, you and Royce doing this album is 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 that what Shady 2.0 is all about? That's kind of like, um, yeah. I mean, in in a way, it's kind of like the next um, the next phase of of Shady. Uh -huh. You know, the next wave or whatever. How, how I mean, I, I, how inspired are you, like by Royce and by Slaughterhouse? Because one of the things I ask Royce is because at the end of the day, you know, we we all love music and you know we all love hip hop and no one MCs, man, when Slaughterhouse was standing around each other to, uh, earlier today, they couldn't really stand still. And it was like, uh, you, you gave a good analogy, it's like being like boxers or fighters all in the same ring. And I'm, I can imagine like in a studio, it must have been like that too. Like, did, was there any, ever a time where Royce would kick a verse and you go, bad. damn. B bad. Excuse me, bad. pardon me. It's okay. Pardon me. The bad would kick a verse and I would yes there were there were actually there's a few moments on the, the EP where I really had to like it was a couple of things that I wanted to go back in and rewrite once I heard <laughs> yeah. his verse you know mm -hmm. um, you know there was but for the most part it was like I don't want to give too much away yeah, with okay. the, you know the EP or whatever um, I just say it was it was fun and it's very with with me and Royce uh -huh. with me and bad yeah it's always a friendly uh, competitive type atmosphere when we're in the studio because uh -huh. it's almost like uh, okay you did that all right I'm gonna say this line uh -huh. and then he'll do, oh okay you said that okay well you know and and there's there's moments I think that uh, you know we just I, I don't even know how to say this without like I, I just don't want to give away too much you want to give away too much I just say it was very fun mm -hmm. it was a very fun competitive type atmosphere and uh -huh. and I think that I need things like this to feed off of I need you know rappers like him you know to and me too I mean I go around him for inspiration uh 
Mm -hmm. Like I was telling you off camera, like I don't, I'm not one of those artists that are inspired all the time. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I got to go around the people that I feel are always inspired, no matter what, that's him. So yeah. I go around him and I go around Slaughterhouse and I think it just makes me all around better artists. So. Well, Slaughterhouse, man, I can only imagine with, you know, Joel, Joe Button, Crooked Eye, you know, that 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 could almost be an, a scary experience because if I right? hate crooked, you hate them. I really do in the studio. <laughs> Why is it's that? It's like you can't really some of those verses that he say, man. You can't really top them. Mm -hmm. You can only just say something that just keeps you afloat on the. Song. He's always got a couple of those lines. Crooked always has a couple of those lines, and I said it about everybody in the group. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, like it's it's very hard to when 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 I like. My opinion, when something, when a bar is set so high, yeah, and and you have this type of caliber of MCs, you know, such as Slaughterhouse, I feel like it, it's it's very hard to judge who has the best verse. And I know that when this album comes out, that's what you know kids are gonna do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, oh, he had the best verse, you know. But but it's so it's so competitive, and it's so you know everything is so you know flows lyrics delivery everything is so on point pinpoint and precise you know it's it's really hard sometimes to judge you know so i just say everybody killed it everybody yeah killed it. it comes down to a matter of preference what mm -hmm. type of style you prefer i think that's yeah, yeah that's what it is how what role um, how much um input are you, you ever seen Tal talladega nights yeah i just went to the talladega 500 yeah. a couple of weeks ago i kind of feel like i don't know what to do with my hands <laughs> right That's with this you... with this mic so uh -huh. it's like like sometimes i want to set it down here uh -huh. but then i don't want to like say something and uh -huh. and talk like this you know it won't pick yeah, up so I, I just i don't know what to do with my hands but you know go with what's natural for evil you know what would evil do and Probably set this place on fire. Okay. Well, after the interview, is, you're free to do okay. all that. It looks like it's actually already been set on fire. <laughs> it looks pretty bad. There you have it, Eminem, ladies and gentlemen. Royce to 5'9", here on our special edition of Rap Fix. Uh, we do a segment, as you know, Elliot, called Pass the Mic, where we like to have an artist ask the featured artist a question. Well, we had Havoc from Mob Deep okay. ask Eminem a question, and we got the answer from Eminem. Here it is. Pass the Mic on 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 our show we call Rap Fix. I was gonna say Rap Radar. I got a question for you, M. Uh, when's your next movie? Cause you killed the first one, so we we wanna know when's your next movie? You gotta do a part two to the eight mile. Nine mile. Thirty six <laughs> mile. Can I, <laughs> Can I get on the soundtrack? <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so what's your next movie? Um well I've had some things in the work. There's some things in the work, a um, couple scripts. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's more so just waiting now to see how they come together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously it's got to be something that I feel like is is dope enough to make me want to say, okay, let me put the mic down for a second and go mm -hmm. go do this, you know, go do this movie. But um, there's some things that, are, like I said, that are in the works, and I, I guess we'll just see how they come together. What, what advice would you? Because you made a very uh, successful transition from a, a musician to being an actor. You've done well. Uh, we got our MTV Movie Awards coming up. A few musicians have been nominated uh, for roles they play, including Justin Timberlake, uh, Justin Bieber. What advice would you give, like artists, musicians who are trying to transition into acting? I don't know. That's a hard question. I don't even know why that's so hard for me. Mm -hmm. um, to transition to acting, I, I think that, I guess I would say this. Um, I feel like, I think Ice Cube said this one time, I think I heard him say this one time, mm -hmm. that if, if, you can, if you can rap and you can, you know, if you can perform, you know, uh, you should be able, like, if you can perform to the camera for p singing and things like that in videos, it should be a pretty fairly natural transition. Mm -hmm. I know that everybody can't do it, and it's not for everybody, but, you know, I did hear him say that a lot of times it's, it's, it should be easy because they kind of coincide. You're used to, to doing that. But, but, I, but I would say that uh, it is a whole, it's like a whole different world. I remember, like, on set of eight mile like just doing like going from rapping like i remember him saying that i, I don't know if he said it to me or i heard him say it mm -hmm. q but but i but i do know that 
making that transition is not i don't even know if i'm making sense i don't know what to do with my hands it's coming together (laughs) making that transition i felt like like having heard him say that was like oh this might be fairly easy Mm -hmm. and it wasn't Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like it's it's a whole different thing because you you may be used to performing to the camera and you may be used to doing certain things in videos and things like that but it's a whole different ball game when the music is off and uh you have lines that you need to say and you have things that you need like remembering the lines and remembering you know and and trying to be natural and what am i going to do when i say this line and how how can i you know like it's it's it that's when it's hand, different. That's when the hand. Huh? That's when you don't know what to do <laughs> with your hands. <laughs> All right. Okay. But uh, yeah, it 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 takes a minute to to get used to. All right. That's the minute I'm talking about um, acting. You know, and mm-hmm. you know, it's 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 really hard, man. You know, it's it's hard for a rapper, any artist, to transition into film. You yeah. know, but I think his first film, Eight Mile, he did a great job. It was cool. so good. Yeah. It was good, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, cool. that's why I think there's so much pressure. But I like that he hasn't followed that up. It yeah. almost it almost makes it more special that yeah. he didn't run back and do something dumb. And you know, I mean, well, he had the cameo in uh, Funny People, but that didn't count. Yeah, that that didn't count. <laughs> who, who, who's some of your favorite? Like one of your favorite um, rappers slash actors that transitioned. I mean, well, I think Ice T is done amazing. Like I'll, I'll catch myself like the wife watches all that Law and Order mm-hmm. stuff. So I'll catch myself watch it. And it's almost like that Ice T is just a whole different person, you know yeah. what I mean? Like then what I see, you know, because I loved Ice T as a rapper, like, mm-hmm. you know, it, up until the early days, the, you know, six in the morning to mm-hmm. New Jack City, like that whole era, mm-hmm. you know, cop killer, all that era where he was the bad guy in rap. Power. And now it's yeah. like he's totally redefined himself in that way. So I think he's a good actor. I think mm-hmm. I think a lot of them have their moments, but I think he's become I think, a craftsman more in that way where I give him props. Who you? Who you yeah, I, I like Bow Wow. Oh, yeah, okay. I, I think, think Bow Wow's done great yeah. potential. Yeah, do like stuff. Mike, yeah. and then when he, you know, when he did out Entourage and yeah. the new lottery movie he did. Yeah, 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 you know, I think Bow Wow is actually, uh, he's made a great transition. I think that um, from the stuff that I've heard, I haven't heard a lot from him. I've heard, you know, I, I still, like, I still have to go, you know, check out everything that they're doing. But I've heard, I've heard enough to know that it feels like... Um, it feels like they're pushing boundaries and buttons, and that's definitely one of the things that um, I'm familiar with, you know, especially like when I first came out, and, and, and I love it. I love the fact that they're doing that, and, you know, it's, and, and, and the dudes can rhyme, you know, so. I'm a big Frank Ocean fan. Frank Ocean fan? I am. I am. Joey put me up on him. I was late to that party, but, yeah, Joey, Joey put me up on Frank Ocean. Frank Ocean is dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm feeling the whole group. I'm feeling the whole group. I'm, I'm, I'm with them though. I haven't heard enough of them. Yeah. To, like, I heard more Frank Ocean for some reason. It seems like he's standing out for some reason. But I definitely, I, I've been getting asked about them so much. It makes me want to go listen to everything that they got. Yeah, that's that's another yeah. thing. It's like you know, you you, what what it is like, for me personally is like, out here like if somebody's making if someone's got a buzz and somebody's making noise, then you know I go check them out. You know, but obviously somebody's got to tell me, yo, you heard of this crew or this, yeah. you know, this person or whatever. And, but like I said, I always try to stay up. Sometimes I'm late getting to the party. Sometimes I'm right on top of it as it's happening. You know, it's it's hard, I think, when, when you create music and you're in the lab, you know, like me and him are a lot. It's hard to stay up on everything as it happens, yeah. you know. But definitely I, I I always try to stay up on everything. I respect the movement, though. I respect that movement, yeah. yeah.